Let me tell you one of the stories regarding a childhood hero that I had. When I was growing up, we had a book in our library on Mary Slessor. It was called White Queen of the Calabar. I had to do a little research to find out where the Calabar was, but it was a region in southeastern Nigeria along the coast and was one of the areas from which many slaves were taken to the New World. Mary Slessor was one of seven children born in Aberdeen, but her father, who was a shoemaker, had a terrible problem with drink and eventually thinking that they could have a fresh start, they moved to Dundee. And there she had a very difficult life, working 10 hours a day in the local school and then studying at night, little by little, until eventually her father died and her mother, having been put through the sad events of a very difficult life, uh, having buried several of her children, she was a godly woman who poured her life into Mary. Mary got involved in Sunday school in the poorest parts of the city, working with difficult circumstances, but always in her heart she had a desire to go to the Calabar. And eventually she left and sailed on the ship Ethiopia on August 5th, 1876. She was 28 years of age, red-headed, bright blue eyes, full of energy, and a heart for God and a heart for people. She learned the local languages and bravely proclaimed the gospel. This area was full of witchcraft and human sacrifices, and they had a horrible habit when twins were born of throwing them both into the jungle to be eaten by the animals because they were sure one of them had been spawned by a demon. And Mary rescued hundreds of these children, adopting a number of them as her own children. Amazing story of fortitude and fearlessness as she proclaimed the gospel. And wonderful things were done in that region of the country. But I would like to read a verse or two from 1 Corinthians chapter 1 to tell you one of the most unknown and yet surprising elements in the story. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 26, the apostle writes, You see your calling, brethren, that not many wise according to the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called, but God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise, and God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things which are mighty and base things of the world and things which are despised God has chosen and the things which are not to bring to nothing the things that are that no flesh should glory in his presence. The most remarkable thing about this story is how the mission started in Calabar. It wasn't the effort of missionaries from England or Scotland. It actually was uh, freed slaves from Jamaica who, when they heard the gospel in their adopted land, became deeply burdened about the country from which they had been stolen. And they began to pray and ask God to open up a mission in the Calabar. Well, there was a a slaver traveling along the coast of Africa that had foundered on the rocks. And on the crew there was a surgeon, a young doctor named Ferguson. And Ferguson had done many kind things for the natives and they had shown kindness to him in return. Eventually another ship came along, he took it back to England, began a lifetime of traveling to Jamaica and back to England as a doctor on these trading ships and became very familiar with the people of Jamaica. Eventually he settled in Liverpool and there he heard the gospel and put his trust in the Lord. And when he heard about the burden they had to open a mission in Calabar, 
Ferguson contacted these people that he had met many years before. And they were so thankful. One king and I think seven chiefs sent him a special embassage and said that he and his friends were welcome to come. They would give them land and they could establish a mission there in the Calabar. And it was really through this that God opened the way for Mary Slessor and others to travel into this extremely dangerous area of the country that was known for white graves and to boldly take the gospel into this region. I think we're going to get a lot of stories like that. Stories about people who were truck drivers or um, auto mechanics or custodians who somehow God used to open the door for the gospel. Just like the shoe salesman that led D.L. Moody to the Lord and so many others like this where it seems that God has set about to establish the work in such a way that everyone will obviously know this was the Lord. Well, may the Lord encourage you. Maybe you're in some isolated area, some back room of life, some place unnoticed by others. But faithfulness in that environment can often be the very spot that God uses to initiate a mighty work so that he and his son get all the glory. Be encouraged and look to him to do something godlike in your life in the days that lie ahead.